Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Amanda and I'm from amandacrochets.com and in today's tutorial I'm going to show you how to make this beautiful falling leaves throw blanket. This blanket measures 49 inches wide by 61 inches long so this makes for a perfect throw blanket to throw over yourself when it's a little bit cooler for the fall season as well as the upcoming winter season. This is definitely a perfect blanket that could really jazz up your living room and it can really put you in the fall festive mood. So I used a variety of different colors here. So I used cranberry, sun gold, a burnt pumpkin, and then over here I used a chocolate brown color and I thought all these colors together were very beautiful and very fall like and it definitely got me in the spirit of fall. Fall is definitely one of my favorite seasons. I love the changing colors. I love the cooler temperature. I'm definitely a sweater and boots type of girl. So I am very excited for the fall season to start coming. So I thought this blanket was perfect and again I made it in a throw blanket size that's perfect for just throwing over yourself if you're just a little bit chilly on those fall nights. You could definitely change out the colors if you like and you can make this your own. I did four, color, four rows of each color and I did a specific striping pattern which I will get to in a few minutes. But if you wanted to change up the colors, if you wanted to make more of the red color and say get rid of the brown or make more brown rows, it's totally up to you. This blanket is very versatile and you can make it in any size that you like with the stitch multiple, which again I will get to in a few minutes. But I just wanted to share this new fall blanket with you and again this was suggested by one of my friends, Kaylee. And she, again, challenged me to get out of my comfort zone. And I came up with this other fall blanket. If you want to see my previous fall blanket, I will go ahead and link that below. Just in case you're interested in checking that out. And you have a few different options of fall blankets to choose from. So let's begin on making the Falling Leaves Throw Blanket. So for today's tutorial, you're going to need a J 6mm crochet hook. You're also going to need one skein of I Love This Yarn from Hobby Lobby, and I use the color brown. You're going to need two skeins of this, and again, I'm using all Hobby Lobby I Love This Yarn. You can use any yarn that you'd like, but I use two skeins of Sun Gold, and you're going to need two skeins of Burnt Pumpkin. And you're going to need three skeins of cranberry. So if you're using the same yarn that I used, this is 100% acrylic. It's a 7 ounce skein or 199 grams. It's 355 yards or 325 meters. And for this yarn, they recommend a US I9 or 5.5 millimeter crochet hook. But again, I'm going to be using that J crochet hook. So I'm going up a one hook size. And again, this is 100% acrylic, and I thought all of these colors together worked very well. Again, if you want to use any other yarn or a different yarn brand altogether, you can definitely do that as well. So I'm going to be starting off with the cranberry color. And to make this sag stitch, you're going to be making a chain in a multiple of three. So this means you're going to make a chain of a multiple of three which is three plus three plus three until your desired width before you continue on to row one. So I'm just going to be making a small swatch today and I'm going to chain a chain of 21 so that's seven times three and if you want to make the same size blanket that I did I ended up making a chain of 162. So you can change this blanket and be any size that you would like. You can make this a baby blanket clear up to a king size blanket by just changing that multiple 
and as long as your multiple is in a multiple of three, you should be good to go. So again, for my falling leaves throw blanket, you're going to need a chain of 162. And if you want to make just a small swatch just before you decide to make the completed blanket, you can go ahead and make a smaller swatch like I am. So again, I'm chaining 21 chains. So to make a chain, you're going to do yarn over your hook and pull through that loop on your hook. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six. So continue to hit until you have 21 chains or 162 chains as my throw blanket or any desired width. Okay, once you have your desired width, you are going to start row one. So for row one, you're going to make a half double crochet and a double crochet into that third chain from your hook. So the loop on your hook does not count. You're going to count three chains from your hook. So one, two, and three. So right here in that third chain from your hook, you're going to make a half double crochet. To make a half double crochet, you're going to do yarn over your hook, insert your hook into that third chain, yarn over, pull up a loop, three loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through all three loops. And then you're going to make a double crochet into that same chain space. So again, yarn over your hook, insert your hook into that same chain space, yarn over, pull up a loop, three loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through two loops, yarn over, pull through two loops. And that is your double crochet. Now if you're a beginner, I highly recommend getting a stitch marker and putting it in that very first stitch. So this is your double crochet, this is your half double crochet. So you want to put your stitch marker into this stitch right here. And that stitch that we skipped at the beginning is going to count as a single crochet. So if you put your stitch marker right here, then when you come back to row two, you'll know where your final stitch of the row is. Next, we're going to skip two chains. So one and two. And the chain after that, you're going to make a single half double and double crochet all into that same chain. So skip two chains, one and two, in the chain after that, insert your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, two loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through two loops. And that is your single crochet. Next, yarn over your hook, insert your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, three loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through all three, and that completes your half double crochet. Finally, yarn over your hook, insert your hook into that chain, yarn over, pull up a loop, three loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and that is your double crochet. So this is going to be the start of your repeat. So you're going to skip two chains, and in the chain after that, you're going to make a single, half double, and double crochet all into that same chain. So again, skip two chains, and in that next chain, make a single crochet, half double crochet, and double crochet. And again, you want to repeat this all the way across until you have three chains remaining. And this just forms a very nice texture to your blanket. I've used this in a few other blankets before, as I mentioned, and I find it to be a very warm blanket and a very warm stitch. So I highly recommend using this stitch for those fall blankets or those winter blankets to give you an extra little bit of warmth. And again, you just want to repeat this all the way down. So skip two chains, make a single, half double, and double crochet all into that same chain. 
and then when you have three chains remaining we will continue to go to row two Okay, so I have come to the end of my row and I have three chains remaining. So I'm going to go ahead and skip two chains and in that very last chain I'm going to make a single crochet. Again, you want to place your stitch marker in that last stitch so you know what the end of your row is. And this is what three, this is what one row of the sedge stitch looks like. Okay, so to move on to row two, you're going to make a chain one and turn your work. Now that chain one is going to count as your single crochet. So go ahead and put your stitch marker in that chain one. And to start row two, you're going to make a half double crochet and a double crochet into that very first stitch. So that stitch right here, so you're going to yarn over, insert your hook, make sure you get both of those loops. So what I mean is if you turn your work over, you see this loop and this loop, or if you go to the next stitch, you see that a little bit better. You want to make sure you get both loops. And then you're going to complete your half double crochet, and then you're going to make a double crochet in that very same space. Okay, and then you're going to skip two stitches and in that next stitch, which is going to be your single crochet from the previous row, you're going to make a single crochet, half double crochet, and double crochet all in that same stitch. Okay, so you're just going to repeat this all the way across. So again, you're going to skip the next two stitches, which is your double crochet and half double crochet from the previous row. And in that next stitch, which is your single crochet, you're going to make a single crochet, half double crochet, and double crochet all in that same stitch. So repeat this all the way across until you have three stitches remaining and then I will show you how to move on to row three. Okay, so I've come to the end of row two, and for row two, you're going to skip those two stitches, and again, you're going to find where you place that stitch marker, and you're just going to make a single crochet in that very last stitch. So when you look at your work, your stitches are going to offset a little bit, and that is what's going to create that beautiful sedge stitch. Now I made four rows of each color so I'm just going to show you for the purposes of this tutorial how to change colors and then I will show you my completed colors of how I made my blanket. So after you finish four rows of one color you're going to introduce a new color. So what I like to do is I like to start my single crochet but I don't end my single crochet. I'm just going to start with that single crochet. And instead of yarning over and completing with that same color, 
I'm going to drop my yarn and you're going to go ahead and cut your yarn and then you're going to introduce your new color. So after I do the cranberry color, I'm going to use that sun gold color and I'm going to leave a little bit of a tail and then you're just going to lay it flat right over your crochet hook and crochet and finish that single crochet stitch. And then I just give the yarn a little bit of a tug and I do a chain one and continue with my work. So again, that chain one is going to count as your single crochet and in that very first stitch you're going to make a half double and a double crochet. Again, you're going to skip those two stitches and in the stitch after that you're going to make a single crochet, half double crochet, and double crochet all in that same stitch. Skip the next two stitches and in the stitch after that make a single crochet, double cro half double crochet, and double crochet. Skip the next two stitches and in the stitch after that make a single crochet, half double crochet, and double crochet. And then when you get to the end, you're going to skip two stitches, and in that very last stitch, you're going to make one single crochet. So this is what your blanket is going to start to look like. And again, I did four rows of each color. Okay, so here's what my blanket looks like. So I'm going to go ahead and include a color chart and that will hopefully help you a little bit better to understand the color changes. So the color chart will be available on my website which is going to be linked below so be sure to check that out just in case you are interested in learning how to change the different colors exactly like I did. So again you're going to start with four rows of that cranberry, four rows of sun gold, then you're going to change to that four rows of burnt pumpkin. Then what I did is I repeated that again. So I did cranberry, sun gold, burnt pumpkin. And then I changed it up a little bit by doing cranberry, brown, cranberry, and then I repeated that again. So this is going to be from the cranberry at the very bottom to the cranberry or to the brown is going to be one section. So I made this section see one two, three times so I had I'm sorry four times so you're gonna have a total of four brown stripes and then to make the blanket even on both sides I did another section of this so it was the same so your blanket starts and ends the same way so your blanket should end with if you're looking at the blanket this way you should have that brown strip and then you're going to do cranberry and then you're going to work this side so it's going to be the brown so say the brown was right here you're going to have cranberry sun gold burnt pumpkin cranberry sun gold burnt pumpkin and then cranberry so just wanted that to be the same on both sides Again, I will leave a color chart just in case you're interested in using the exact same color pattern that I did. Again, this is a nice throw size blanket. It's 49 inches long, 49 inches wide, and 61 inches long. You can definitely make it bigger or smaller depending on what you would like for this blanket. You can definitely change up the colors if you wanted to do something different. 
but again I wanted to keep this fall themed as my favorite season is fall and again my friend Kaylee challenged me to get out of my comfort zone and make a blanket in different colors that I normally wouldn't pick. So I really like this blanket as well as the other fall blanket that I made a few weeks ago and I'm definitely ready for the upcoming fall season. So I hope you enjoyed this falling leaves blanket tutorial. I hope you give this tutorial a try and I hope you enjoy it. Please like, comment, and subscribe to see all future videos by me. And as always, happy crocheting. Bye.